As you can see, we've made a little improvement to our screen here. I am glad you found your way in here, for I am sure there is much that will interest you. Today's video idea was suggested to us by Diets. Now, Diets has been around the Beyond community for many years, and he requested a tutorial on user interface elements such as buttons and health bars on the screen. So, let's get started. The on-screen interface that you're going to see in today's video is facilitated by two key aspects of the DreamMaker language. Those are the client screen and viz contents, which is a list of atoms attached to an object. We're going to briefly cover both in today's video. The first thing that we'll do is we'll create an invisible overlay for our map pane, and we're going to give it this path. It's a mob variable, it's temporary, and it is a screen object called interface overlay. Think of this overlay as an invisible window that covers your whole game screen. And in this window, we're going to place objects like buttons and bars. The DM reference tells us that screen is a list of objects that are displayed on the user's screen. And right now we're just displaying this invisible window called interface overlay. The screen lock variable of this object is going to determine where it appears on our screen. And we're just going to set it to one one to tell it that we want it to start in the bottom left corner and expand to the top right. This is what's going to allow us to create elements of a user interface. And again, the DM reference gives us examples here, such as buttons, drag and drop areas, and stat monitors. Before we use the screen object, we're going to need to add it to the screen on login. And that's what we've done here on line seven. This is the portion of our login code from the step-by-step -step user guide. And as you can see, we've made some additions to it. Since the client screen is a list, we're going to have it called the add procedure. And on login, we're going to add the interface overlay object to our client's screen. Now when the player logs in, he has an invisible window that covers his entire map pane called the interface overlay. So now we're going to add some buttons to this interface overlay. These are things that can be clicked by the player. We define a new object called buttons, and buttons is using the icon interfacebutton.dmi. It's not a very complex icon. It's just a 64 by 24 lavender square here. Since we'd like for text to appear on this interface button, we're going to define its map text height as 24 and its map text width as 64. Again, these are the dimensions of our button icon. We'll set its alpha to be 100 so that it's somewhat transparent. Whenever a new button is created, we're going to need to assign it a set of coordinates. These are going to be px and py. The button's pixel x will be set to its px passed argument, and its pixel y will be set to its py passed argument. If you don't know how to pass arguments or you don't know what I'm talking about, please see our previous video on passing arguments. Next on line 35, we're going to tell it what text we want to appear on the button. This is just a string in HTML format, which determines the size, color, and orientation of the text that we want. The important thing for you to know is that we are displaying the name variable. And lastly, just for some added flavor, we're going to say that when our cursor passes over the button, it becomes fully opaque and when it exits, it becomes alpha 100 again, somewhat transparent. We're still inside of our buttons object here, and we're going to define four different buttons. Those are exercise, punch, kick, and talk. Now, because exercise is a procedure called from interacting with an object's verb, this button here is not going to have functionality until we redesign our system later on, but that's okay. The following three buttons will have functionality. Punch is going to call our jab verb, and kick is going to call our roundhouse verb. These are two verbs that we created in the previous video on passing arguments. The last button here is talk, and honestly, this one could do for redesign as well. Talk is a verb attached to NPCs, and so what we need to do is find NPCs in our designated area, and then call talk. Now we're not done yet, but we are getting close, because now we need to add our four buttons to our interface overlay screen object we need them to appear on our screen. And how do we do that? Well, we're gonna do that by giving them a container. That's this new object here called action buttons. Action buttons is an object that's going to appear on our interface overlay and act as a container for all four of our buttons. The action buttons object has a type here called actions. Actions is going to be created on login and we're going to define its visual contents here. Remember that visual contents is a list of atoms, and the things in this list are going to be attached to our action buttons container. 
Recall from before that when we said we create a new button, we need to pass in coordinates. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Our X and Y coordinates by default are 8. And so as you can see, all four of these buttons have the same X coordinate. That means that when we see them, they should stack vertically. For each new button, we'll increase the value of the Y coordinate by 26. Remember that our buttons are 24 pixels tall. And this just separates them cleanly. Again, going back to our login, here on line 10, we're going to access the visual contents of the interface overlay object. And to this object, we're going to add a new object, action buttons, actions. Again, what we're saying here is that our invisible window, the interface overlay, should have the visual contents of the action buttons, which is a container that holds our four action buttons. Let me just show you what that looks like. We've made a little improvement to our screen size since the last video, and you can see those four buttons here that we've added to the visual contents of the screen object. So this covers the very basics of screen and visual contents. As you can see when I was logged into the game, we now have a stamina bar that updates when we use stamina. That's something that we'll cover in part two because it's a little more complex than this. In the meantime, if you'd like full access to this test project, you can join our Discord and check out our resources channel. The GitHub for the Grind Night Gym is listed right there. You can download it, open it up yourself, and play with the code. Stick around for part two, and come by and chat with us if you have any questions or comments about this video or any others that we have here on the channel. Good luck with your project, and we'll see you on the next one.